Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup, Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday soon. <laughs> if that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, it's back down into the devil's lair. Yes, into the bilge of the wheelhouse to carry on um, with um, moving the engine over, finishing up and getting started on the starboard side uh, plastic frames. Uh, as well, I'm doing some of the um, uh, filling in the old uh, through hulls as well as some butt blocks all mixed in around. Anyway, we're getting a lot of stuff. How about I just show you? And good morning folks, I apologize, I haven't actually been filming anything yet today and it's shortly afternoon. It's been a productive day in that I had to spend most of the morning driving around buying materials. But I have steamed in one more frame and it's starting to get really, really good. I'm scum up with a system where I'm bolting them at the bottom and I've come up with a system where I'm bolting them through here. And uh, these are all through screwed from the far side too and it's really, really coming along great. There's one other little thing, if I can just find it, ha ha! Wedges, okay, hang on, I better put you on a tripod. Okay then, well I'm not sure you can see it, but if you think of the way these are curved, there's actually a little wedge back here. I don't know if you can see my finger sticking out there. There's a gap, um, which is ever-changing as you go forward, um, between the plastic frames and the planking, basically a curved wedge. Now, uh, I'd like to be able to make sure I could drive fasteners through this plank into this plastic. It's part of the reason it's there. So, I've just cut a whole bunch of wedges in uh, yellow cedar, which will last a long, long time, in an effort to see, I'm just gonna make a collection of them and sort of test fit them. Oh my gosh, this one feels like it's made for here. Oh yeah, that one is actually a perfect fit for right there. Which makes me very happy because that was basically the first one. This one's a bit tricky because it's got to go under the propeller shaft down at this end. So, but because it's steamed, I should be able to flex it under. Just far enough to bring it back. Okay, there we go. Get that up in the right place. Get that driven up a bit. Okay. And down. Okay, start to tighten this up. Just about. And it is down. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay, time to fasten it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so now on the bottom I have to find little drill holes that I drilled through to guide me to where uh, um, these next holes go. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. And drill them. Okay. One more done. Definitely getting into a nice rhythm. Basically, pick a piece of wood, pick the end of it that is likely to do the best with the steam bending, which is this end for sure. Take off my three inch bevel and chamfer it. So I figure while I'm waiting for this last one to steam, there's not much else to do because there's none after it. So I have to prepare um, the port side of the boat to be 
finished up and then gear up to move the engine over but there's one through hull to abandon on the port side and it's small so i have to make another one of my little through hull uh bung sanding things how about me getting all safety conscious all right let's go cut the head off okay there's a little critter okay here we go Oh my gosh, that's almost perfectly tapered in one go. It's clean right through, wow. Okay, so the next part is to make the bung. And the bung, of course, has to be tapered into a cone, but uh, also very important is that it has to be from the same species with the grain in the same direction. Now I have some yellow cedar to make it out of, but to make the grain in the same direction makes it a little more complicated. So we start with a hole saw, hey, let's go do it. All right, so here's a nice piece of yellow cedar, and here's a hole saw, large enough to cut the bung. Now don't worry about it, we're only going to use the drill part of the hole saw just to get started. Once I've got it started enough, we'll take the drill out, the pilot drill out of the hole saw. And chuck it back up. And now, because we've already started, we can cut a relatively accurate cylinder of yellow cedar. I calculated correctly that it would just barely make it through. Whew. So here we have, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, grain across uh, cylindrical bung with only a little bit of damage at one end and you'll see in a minute why that doesn't matter. Some wonderful fella just dropped by with a cooler full of beer. Huh, and ice, absolutely fabulous. Well, thanks ever so much after work today. Lloyd and Scott and I will have a few of those. Okay. Okay, so what I'm making is a little mandrel. And in fact, I'm using a little uh, grinder uh, mandrel holder typey thingy that I um, had lying around. And basically, I'm going to spin that onto there. And with that, I end up with something I can chuck up the dowel in, not the dowel, the piece of wood. The only problem is that's a quarter inch hole and that's three eighths and I want to use it as an index. So I'm actually going to just file that down to be a uh, uh, quarter inch. There we go. Beauty. Okay, so now it's about sanding it. Is to chuck it up in the drill press. All right, so with the circular saw set over on a bevel, I have put a ever so slight bevel on here, which I believe matches, or at least half, or it's relatively close um, to the taper on the, um, on the bung I used to cut the hole. So now I'm just gonna glue some sandpaper on here. Okay, we'll just glue that right on there like that. And uh, let me bring you down so you can see what's going on. Okay, we're now we're in top gear. Oh yeah. I'm close enough now that I want to make sure I can establish that I have the correct taper. Okay, this is working great with one possible problem. Okay, so if I measure two inches apart, 1.0, I know you can't see it, 1.08, and I measured down uh, 0.95, okay? And on the piece that I've just cut, uh, this is two inches high, so at the top it's 1.09, and at the bottom it is, um, 0.91 pretty darn close we can fine-tune it the only problem is the whole thing is way too small it's okay i have more hole saws we'll make another one it's so fun anyway right all right then not a terrifically productive day but i got sidetracked onto a bunch of stuff which is important and will advance me in the big picture but didn't make that much advancement on the frames tomorrow will be better and good morning it's time for our first butt block and uh, if you can see those dots of light coming through down there that's where it's going to go um, the schedule obviously I put four days of making frames but of course in and around that I have to do all kinds of stuff on 
the port side of the boat before I can move the motor over. So that's fine. It's all work I had to do and I have a whole day for butt blocks and it won't take that. So uh, we're going to finish up that through hole bung repair and uh, get any butt blocks in on this side that have to be done. One of them is a bit complicated, uh, but it's going to be fun. Kind of look forward to it. All right. So having cut it to size vertically, I'm placing it over, basically over where it's going to go. And uh, then just basically copying through um, the lines of the frames below. And the test fit. Very, very nice. Okay, now from what I understand, you want a deep chamfer on the bottom inside corner of a butt block to allow uh, drainage and to keep it uh, allow some ventilation in there. Although I do like the idea of them being relatively using the full width of the bay. Uh, so I'm just going to tidy this up a bit, put some chamfers on it here and there, and then we'll clamp it in place so we can put some screws in from below. Now, something that one has to consider with a butt block is the curve of the hull, but this is incredibly flat part of the hull, so there's no issue there. So I'm just going to place it in place, put a block across so that I can screw through from behind, and then we're going to drill it to bolt it. All right, now that'll hold it tight. We can put some screws in from the backside. Well, here's our friend. Now I'm going to put screws in, new screws in where the old empty holes were. But in addition to that, I am going to through bolt uh, this particular butt block and um, that will make it completely bulletproof. So let's just drill out the old holes. Okay, well, with the addition of the extra screws into the adjoining frames as well as new screws into a new butt block, this butt block is now pretty close to perfect but we can do better there we go so i'm just grouping up um the heads of these carriage bolts and a little cotton on each one just a little that's all we need of that one and then even more but the way i'm going to do this without getting too sticky is just do them while they're already in the holes Actually, to be fair, I probably should have done the whole process like this. Much simpler. Okay, more sealant. Nice big goop of sealant there. Okay, that isn't a mess. Excellent. We'll put some nuts and washers on. We're off to the races. You might say that these are a little long and I could zing them off, but I'd rather not cut the um, galvanizing off. These are, being a little bit long will do no harm at all. These don't have to be terribly tight, because after all they're pulling into cedar. Fantastic, that is what I call bulletproof. Carrying on with the uh, making new bungs, tapered bungs project, here's a larger hole saw. Now I'm not sure this hole saw is going to, no it's not. Easy enough to just toss it in the table saw and cut the other side off. That'll mean successful bungs are easier to cut anyway. Okay, let's chuck this up. First insert the pilot. Oh yeah, that's really worked out neatly. And then the screws. Now the truth is this doesn't actually have to turn perfectly true because the sanding will true it. Okay. And off we go. Point 0.95. Well, that should just barely poke through. Let's do a test. A little test. If it fits in the bottom, I know it'll come through from above. Excellent. Let's go try it the other way. And what do we have here? Oh, that. <laughs> Crikey, that feels great. Okay. Uh, take the screws off. Uh, get mix up some epoxy and pound it in. Yes, you heard me right, epoxy. I've opted to put these in with epoxy, um, partly because, of course, the bones are incredibly dry, and in fact, the wood here is really quite dry too. 
So uh, I'm okay with epoxy with a little bit of thickener and uh, let's put it in. Excellent. Okay, and we'll stop there. I'm really, really excited about how this is going. Um, technically, I'll probably be a day late, but I've done some bun blocks, I've done some uh, bung um, abandons, so I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty, pretty darn good. I may actually get around to throwing in some uh, through holes. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now is wash the inside of the hull, absolutely drench it again, um, just to blow out as much of the sawdust as possible to start fresh and to wet it. Okay, when I'm putting the plastic frames in, I basically line them up so that when the frame comes off here, this is a simulated frame, it just hits right on to that bevel that I put up there. Um, and this ends up being a straight bevel. I don't actually curve that because it just goes up in here with its own bevel against the plank. So that works pretty well. So the, it's in the right place. Now I just got to decide where the uh, cutting has to end. So I slide this back down this way. And as soon as it touches the plastic, I know that's where the beginning of the arc has got to be because th the frame is coming down here and then boom at that point it'll start to curve at that 18 inch radius and follow that curve. Okay, all the plastic frames are in. I know you can't see them, it's just such a mess and so dark in here. But anyway, so pleased. Um, gonna do a little bit of a cleanup and uh, call it a day, pretty much.
What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, got butt blocks made, got uh, bungs in abandoned through hulls done, uh, got all tidied up, slid the engine over. Really a fantastic day, plus all the plastic frames done on the starboard side. I think there's a reasonable chance with butt blocks already half underway, I will be caught up by the end of tomorrow. All the steam bent frames done and all the butt blocks done. Well, anyway, let's see what we get.